If you haven't yet watched my videos about creating the circle of fifths and how to use it to calculate the key signatures of major keys, I do suggest that you watch those videos before watching this one as I'll be expanding on the concepts that I've previously discussed. However, if you're ready to go, here's how to use the circle of fifths to calculate the key signatures for minor keys. You'll recall that for major keys, we used C on our circle of fifths as the main point of reference, as C major has no sharps or flats in the key signature. The first thing you need to know for minor keys is that we use A as the central point of reference because A minor does not have any sharps or flats in its key signature. Therefore, all the keys this side of A will be the keys with sharps in them, whereas all the keys on this side of A will be the keys with flats in them. OK, there is one really, really important issue I want to clarify at this point. The circle of fifths can only be used to calculate the key signature of major and minor keys. You may already know that there are different types of minor keys, melodic and harmonic, but whichever of these types of minor key you'll be using, you need to always remember that the key signature is just part of the scale. This is where using the circle of fifths for minor keys is just a little more complex than using it for major keys. Let's look at the scale of C minor, just as an example. You can already see that I've put in a key signature of three flats. I'll explain in a moment how we can use the circle of fifths to calculate why this is the case. But to create the scale, we just follow the normal rules. So we start on the tonic or first note. In this case, it's a C because we're using C minor. And then putting a note in a space and then on a line and then in a space and so on and so on all the way up to the next C. Now, the associated board theory exams expect you to know about melodic and harmonic forms of the minor scale. To create them, we have to make some changes to what's on screen. For the harmonic form of the scale, we take the seventh note of the scale and raise it by a semitone. This turns the B flat into a B natural. By raising the seventh by a semitone, we have created a C harmonic minor scale. The thing to note is that although we can use the circle of fifths to work out the key signature of three flats, there is just a little more that needs to be done to the scale. The same is true for the melodic form of the minor scale. If we look at both the sixth and seventh notes of the scale and raise them both by a semitone, the A flat from the key signature becomes an A natural and the B flat becomes a B natural. Now we've created an ascending C melodic minor scale. The descending scale is somewhat different to the ascending form of the minor scale. However, this video is not about how to create the different types of scales, so I apologise that I've raced over the technicalities of how to create the different types of minor scales, but I want you to be absolutely clear that the circle of fifths for minor keys only helps in calculating the key signature. The melodic and harmonic forms of the scales will require some further refining. OK, let's go back to our circle of fifths after that slight diversion. The circle of fifths works in very much the same way as using it to calculate the key signatures for major keys. We already know that A is our main point of reference as it has no sharps or flats in its key signature. So let's try a few different examples. E minor first. It is on the sharp side of the clock and one notch away from A, so we know it has one sharp in the key signature. Let's look at B minor. B minor is also on the sharp side of the clock and two notches away from A, so we can deduce that it, it has two sharps in the key signature. Now, how about G minor? We're now looking at the flat side of the clock and it is two notches away from A, so we can calculate that G minor has two flats in its key signature. The higher associated board theory exams, grade 3, 4, 5, 6 approximately, will require you to know more than just a handful of simple minor key signatures. We do need to make some small adjustments to our circle, however, so that we can use it properly for all minor keys. 
we're going to use enharmonic equivalence. Now, I talked about enharmonic equivalence very briefly in my major keys video, so I'm not going to uh, go into much detail here. All you need to remember is that an enharmonic equivalent means the alternative spelling of a note. For example, B flat is the same as A sharp, D sharp is the same as E flat, and so on. We're going to enharmonically change the notes on the sharp side of the circle. We're going to start with G flat right down at the bottom. We'll add in its enharmonic equivalent underneath F sharp. And we're going to do this for all the other flattened notes on this side of the clock. So underneath D flat, we'll add C sharp. Under A flat, we'll add G sharp. Under E flat, we'll add D sharp. And finally, under B flat, we'll add A sharp. Now, why have we made these enharmonic equivalent additions? If you watched my major keys video, you remember that if we are traveling around the circle of fifths on the sharp side, you'd never get a key that has a flat in its name. Therefore, G flat doesn't exist. It's F sharp, it's N harmonic equivalent. Similarly, if we are traveling around the flat side of the circle, then A sharp doesn't exist. It's B flat. Let's just try a few examples. B flat minor. As there is a flat in its name, we know that we have to travel around the flat side of the clock. So let's count. D is one notch away from A. G is two notches. C is three. F is four. B flat is five. Therefore, we can say that B flat minor has five flats in its key signature. Let's try G sharp minor. As there is a sharp in its name, we know we have to travel around the sharp side of the circle. So let's count again. E is one notch away from A. B is two notches. F sharp is three. C sharp is four. G sharp is five. Therefore, we can say that G sharp minor has five sharps in its key signature. One final example to try, A flat minor. It's a flat, so we count on the flat side of the circle. So D is one notch, G is two, C is three, F is four, B flat is five, E flat is six, and A flat is seven. So A flat minor has seven flats in its key signature. You've probably noticed that in the top left hand corner of the screen are the first letters of our useful phrase, Father Christmas gave Dad an electric blanket, and beneath it, the same series of letters in reverse. And more about this can be found in my video, Beginner's Guide to the Circle of Fifths. We can use the top row to tell us the order of sharps, and the bottom row to tell us the order of the flats. So, for example, we've already worked out that E minor has one sharp in this key signature. We then look at the top row, the order of the sharps, and can see that F is the first letter. Therefore, in E minor, there is one sharp in the key signature, and that note is F sharp. B minor has two sharps in the key signature. We then take the first two notes of the order of sharps and see that they are F and then C. Therefore, B minor has two sharps in the key signature, and they are F sharp and C sharp, and so on, all the way around to A sharp minor. The same works for the order of the flats. C minor has three flats in the key signature. The first three letters of our order of flats are B, E, and A. Therefore, we can say in C minor, there are three flats in the key signature, and they are B flat, E flat, and A flat. You can use the order of flats to help you with all the other minor keys as well.